Welcome back for another episode of Garage Specific, everyone. So thanks again for checking in. Today's episode, we're gonna continue working on sound deadening the Honda. We're gonna close this area up here. Um, down there, you can see that black spray. That was literally applied there when I did the initial welds to protect the area, because there was some rust from the inside. The rest of the stuff on the brand new panels, I went with some self-etch primer immediately and protected that. But what I'm gonna do in today's episode is I use some leftover POR15 to actually create a little bit better of a barrier between the metal, making sure that we don't get any water kind of seeping its way in there. Also, we're gonna be using some Crown Rust Lubricant. I hear this stuff is awesome, so we're gonna do that as well in those tough to reach spots that I can't get with the brush. As well, we're gonna prep up the engine bay so we can get the H22 locked in there. We still have a lot of finer things to do to get to that point, so stay tuned for the episode. So we'll try and not get this on anything other than what we need to. All right, so two coats of the POR15 on both the panels. I know it's hard to see on this one, but all the way up where I did the welds in there. And uh, we're gonna let this fully dry before I do anything in here. I don't wanna accidentally touch this and make contact with the outside of the vehicle because POR15 is extremely hard to get off. So we're just gonna go ahead, pull some boxes down that I have stored up here and see what I have with parts and uh, see what's gonna be going on in this engine bay. So after laying on that POR15, I let that dry uh, nice and good overnight, and I went ahead and I applied the leftover of the silver uh, style sound deadening on the rear quarter areas. I still have this style left here for the doors. I'm probably gonna do that maybe at the very end, but pretty much the sound deadening on the inside for now is done. So I can move on to the engine. And so far with the engine bay, I've just gone over, cleaned everything up here so we can have a nice clean area to work with. I got my engine mounts here and I got the H22. Now I also went to the store and had to pick up some additional hardware for the actual mounting. Some of them were so rusted out. Like that's just pretty heavy rust on there. Surprised I know where this stuff is. But like that right there when that focuses. That's just awful. So we had to get that replaced. I got that all in. I'm actually gonna put the engine mounts um, in for now and then uh, clean this up and mount the engine mounts that go on there. And we might be ready to drop it into the engine bay. Before we actually mount any of the mounts inside the Civic, we need to go through every single bolt threading on the engine area. Reason being is if you actually see the amount of rust that my car did, I'll show you that right now. I've actually already gone ahead off camera and re-threaded everything, but you want to be able to make it that you can just literally finger tighten the bolt. This is a 125 pitch uh, M10. These are also the M10 125s. And over here on the left um, passenger side is a M12 125. So you want to do that on all those areas, clean those out nicely. It'll just save you a ton of time and a ton of headaches. First one we're gonna mount is the transmission mount. Now I'm using my OEM ones. They were still in pretty good shape. I've just cleaned those out. Just throw in a little bit of anti-seize on there and get them mounted. Oh, 
All right, so after about a good four hours, yeah, four hours it took for me to install this motor with my brother. Complete first time doing this, and this was a very tight fit. You really can't get this motor dropped in, just level and dropped into place, I wish, honestly, but you actually really have to get the motor transmission side down as far as you can, basically a 45 degree plus angle, and just have it slide underneath the frame, and then just kind of re-level it to fit it into a position where you can actually get the motor mounts on. This motor mount ended up being the first mount that we put on, but we basically disassembled all the mounts off of the motor and on the frame of the car, and then just basically pieced this back together and then retightened things down uh, to the frame. We did the driver's side first, then we worked our way to the transmission mount, did the exact same thing in that same process. So one issue we did run into is when we tightened down the transmission and the driver's side bolts, that the motor itself wasn't actually sitting nice and level, that it couldn't fit uh, with that T-bracket. It's underneath that mess of crap. The T-bracket mount itself was actually sitting a little higher, so we weren't able to flip, uh, feed the bolt through. So we had to back off the bolts on those two positions and then push the motor on the rear end, and we were able to feed it in through after that. And we were good to go, torqued everything down. And uh, we're in good shape, honestly. A challenging process for sure. The first time taking four hours felt like forever, especially because we were just tinkering so many times, trying to get it in that perfect spot. Like I probably scuffed up the frame a bit. I'm, I'm not too concerned with it, but like shit, it was actually quite hard to do. That's gonna be it for this episode. So I was able to complete the sound deadening on the rear end of the vehicle. The doors, I still actually have to finish, but I'm actually gonna pull down those panels up there and bring some stuff in here that's on the ground that's seasonal in the backyard and whatever to put that up in storage and then just be able to work on the interior stuff. And other than that, the star of this episode is definitely getting the H22 dropped in. So if you guys liked it and you like how it looks in there, do leave a thumbs up to this episode and I'll see you guys in the next episode of Garage Specific. <laughs>